Um, but yes, thank you uh, very much for being here tonight, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with everyone. Um, so I, I prepared some information about a ministry we have here. It's a ministry that has been going on before uh, my family and we even moved here, uh, Reaching Out Ministry, and uh, I joined um, uh, Mark Freeman and Raymond Walker in it, and we have some others, uh, some of you that are involved in it as well, and I thank you all for your participation in it. Participation in it. And so tonight I thought um, we could share some more about it, and, and Mark wanted to, uh, me also to share some information. So, uh, so let's uh, get started. So one of the first things before, I did want to mention um, you're invited. We, uh, we have a, a Bible class going on right now in A102. Um, and the focus of this class is on uh, in Christ. It's a follow-up study for people that have, after they have been baptized, uh, and basically, I'll, tell, I'll talk a little bit more about that class, but in this uh, particular one, our focus is on how to actually teach it or, or lead it or assist it, basically how to be a part of it. Um, and the teachers were co-teaching, it's Jeremy Haynes, uh, Chris Wright, and myself. So I, I know there are some amazing classes going on, so that's, that's a tough one. But if you uh, do have some interest, and you can feel free to pop in one or two times uh, um, for this class. And then uh, I would like to mention that we also, last quarter, we had a class on sharing the gospel. So this is actually part two of a class that we did uh, last quarter. Uh, and, and I'll introduce you um, later on this evening to, uh, to some of the material that we, we used in, in that class. Okay. So, uh, so just getting started, uh, you know, I know a lot of us know this uh, Bible verse. Uh, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 15, 16. And so here we have a nice picture of the world. Uh, and, we, and we know that, in fact, uh, not only is the world large, but we also have a local world here uh, in Houston, even in Texas. So we have our, uh, our, our role as the local congregation here uh, to be able to preach the gospel to all creation. Also, uh, we have this other version of that same verse in, that we see in Matthew. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So here I highlighted uh, make disciples. And so that's part of, of what we are um, about in this uh, ministry as well, uh, make disciples. I put up some words here too. Uh, we see here, we hear these words sometimes in, in church setting, evangelism, uh, sharing the gospel, uh, making disciples for Jesus. A question I had for, for all of you, uh, and a question I often uh, self-reflect on as well is, well, how, what, is, what do you think of when you see these words? What feeling comes over you? Is it excitement? Is it f maybe fear? Is it, boy, that's a, that's a big burden, uh, or is it, that's not for me? That's for the elders to take care of, or that's, that's the minister's job? Um, what, what, what comes over uh, your thoughts when you see these words. Maybe it's a very official word when we look at evangelism. It sounds very technical. Uh, maybe a word that we only hear uh, in a church setting. Uh, so that's something that, uh, you know, beyond today, uh, uh, take home with you to self-reflect on what, what, what comes to mind um, when you see those words. <clears throat> I also thought I'd share with you this little, it's a it's very lighthearted, very silly, but it's a fearless evangelism. And you have this little mouse, and he says, excuse me, but have you heard the good news of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Sometimes it might feel that way, right? And I want to let you know that's okay, right? Um, sometimes it feels like a very big task. And I often, I often feel like that mouse uh, when I think about having to uh, share the gospel or, or share um, the fact that I'm a Christian or to, you know, anything um, of that nature. So I'm here to say it, it's okay and that we have God behind us and we'll go into a little bit more of that and in God's work uh, to be able to give us that courage, to give us 
the words to say and to um, give us those moments um, to be able to uh, share um, that story. I also wanted to share with you a little bit about the problem we face. Um, sorry for that the text might be a little bit, I don't know if you can read it, the font. Um, but, you know, I, th I know that a lot of us know, you know, uh, that there is a problem in the world, obviously. Um, this is just to bring us, you know, there are a lot of different statistics you can look at. This is just one. I don't know how accurate it really is, but okay, it's, it, gives, it brings the point. But it, it mentions, it says, by 2070, Christians will likely make up less than half the U.S. population. Currently, 64% of people say they are Christians, but nearly a third of those raised Christian eventually switch to none or nothing in particular. And what they're talking about here, the none or nothing in particular, is a survey uh, that they, they write. What do they affiliate with? And, and I'll show you a, a, um, a slide after this with some numbers, too. It says, while only about 20% of those raised without religion became Christian. So that's people that didn't have and then became Christian. If that ratio of switching, basically going from believing in God to something of none, continues at a steady pace, there, then in roughly half a century, only about 46% of Americans will identify as Christians. So, you know, I put a little star saying that's a hypothetical scenario. Of course, they're just you know, running some numbers and trends and seeing, but I think the, beside the detail of the number, you know, whether that's accurate or not, the, 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 the major theme is we know that we are in a spiritual battle and Satan will do anything he can to destroy the kingdom. But us as um, in God's kingdom, citizens in God king, God's kingdom, we take part in, in sharing the gospel with those around us. In this statistic, this one might be hard to see, but it says one third in U.S. adults believe in a higher power of some kind, but not in God as described in the Bible. Do you be, and basically the question here is, do you believe in God or not? And 80% said yes, uh, and then you see in that smaller uh, bin, believe in God as described in the Bible versus believe in some other higher power. And you can see the number goes to 56% believe in God as described in the Bible. And then we see here the 19%. So these are some different numbers. Uh, but here we can also notice, you know, my takeaway in some form of positive uh, nature is the harvest is ready. We have 80% people, whether or not they believe it, it's in the, the, the God as described in the Bible, but they believe in, in God. We have... The harvest is ready for us to, to help bring those 23% back over or to bring the others on the other side. We have a part and we have an opportunity to take part in that, uh, to bring that number over. If we look at it from the positive point of view. So here's another, uh, another study. Uh, so now looking at that um, basically as the... Um, the problem we face in the world, when we look at uh, why people have a hard time sharing their faith, this is a, a results of a survey uh, conducted um, of 6,000 Christians. The, the three, there are several reasons. Uh, three of the major reasons that came up were uh, confidence in one's own knowledge, uh, fear of rejection, uh, friendships, don't want to jeopardize friendships, um, these are the three, three major um, uh, reasons. And so some of what we're, what we're hoping to continue to do and talk about in our um, Bible class or in our reaching out ministry, you know, not just in the last quarters, but in the future to come as well, is how do we overcome some of these, um, how do we overcome some of these uh, reasons or how, does it, how do we help each other? You know, I need your help as well. Um, you know, I need encouragement from you. Um, and we need encouraging each other um, in, in this, you know, confidence in one's own knowledge, thinking that we have to have a PhD in biblical studies and have done uh, um, extensive research in biblical context, you know, to overcome the fact that, no, you don't need to have that type of, um, of, of knowledge. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, more about what maybe you can start with. 
a fear of rejection or fear of being eaten by that cat. <laughs> you know, there, there's that fear that I think God praying to the Lord uh, can help us overcome uh, some of those fears. And, and not only overcome those fears, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to practice our faith, to, um, to be like when Peter stepped out um, from the boat, um, when Jesus called him to walk on water. Sometimes it seems impossible. In, in the way I feel like, it's almost like a miracle when somebody, uh, it practically is a miracle when somebody believes in God. They turn from a, a unbelief to, um, to a state of belief. Um, and so it's like uh, when Jesus calls a walk on water. That's a very, it's, it can often be a, a huge challenge that can be sometimes um, um, discouraging maybe if, if you don't see results all the time. But we're here to uh, um, talk about how do we practice our faith and, and build our faith in that. Uh, friendships, we don't want to jeopardize friendships. You know, we talked about, we just mentioned that a little bit. But, you know, it, you know we think about um, what what does a friend really mean? You know, you, in a lot of times in our, we talked about this uh, slide this morning in our Bible class, um, and uh, we had a lot, a lot of good comments from this, but you know, friendships, you know, not wanting to over, overburden, but when we think about our friends, we, we care about them, don't we? You know, we care about um, their, the livelihood in the currentness, right? But I think we can also start to um, prick our own hearts on caring for them in their eternity. How do we care about their eternal state in our friendships? And we don't want to jeopardize those, um, but I think there are some ways that we can do that wisely where we can manage both at the same time. We can, uh, and those are things that, these are things that are on our, our minds as we talk about um, uh, reaching out. Um, so going back to so we talked about those three reasons um, that, you know, some of those three major reasons, but where can we start? I think sometimes um, we, we might overburden um, ourselves where we think we have to do something tremendous all at one time or it's all on ourselves. Um, but I think there's one place that we can start and that's me sharing with you how Jesus has changed my life. And that's a starting point. And what I say by me and you is meaning yourself and whoever uh, you decide to at that point or uh, what opportunity the Lord has given you to share, your, um, to share your story. And so tonight I actually prepared um, also to share how I became a Christian. That's something that I'd like to share uh, with you as well. Um, but I'd like to add this. Um, so what is your story? You know, I'll share mine. Uh, but you know, as you know, as we as you go back home tonight, you know, to think about what has Jesus done for you in your life? Where were you became, before you became a Christian? Or maybe that's something that you grew up with in your your whole life. You're blessed with an opportunity to um, have that as a legacy from generations before you. But even then. I know for sure that there are stories you have in your personal life where God has brought you from a difficult time, something that has done something for you um, that you can share about God's power, about what God means to you, why you come here all the time. Um, it's, more, it's more than those awesome donuts that we get, though I do like the donuts. <laughs> but why are we here? So what is your story? Um, in 1 Peter 3.15, it says, but in your hearts... Revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Gentleness and respect. I really like that last part, because um, oftentimes, how are we when we're looking at the world? Are we looking at them with gentleness and respect? Do we look on to those that are lost with anger or do we look on to the lost with gentleness and respect? How, 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 can, we, uh, how can we reach them? Gentleness and respect. I'd like to now share a little bit about my story, uh, about where, how God, what God has done uh, in my life. Um, so I was born um, in Burbank, California, and I grew up there as a child until 15. 
I have two older sisters. Uh, one of my, my oldest sister, her name is Lee, so she's nine years older than me. Uh, I have another sister, Sue, she's six years older than me, so I was the, I was the baby in the family. Uh, I did not grow up in a Christian home. Uh, I have memories of my parents actually taking me to uh, a Buddhist temple. Um, and I have uh, real memories of that. And I actually don't really even understand why we were going. I never understood. It was never explained to me. Uh, there are things that were done there that I had no idea the reasons. Um, I had no interest other than the fact that we got free food there. That was always fun. <laughs> um, but I, it, it, I didn't understand it, right? Um, but even at that young age of, as a child, I always felt, you know, even at a younger age, um, that there was a God somewhere. Um, but I, no one was there to tell me about it. <clears throat> so my parents, um, they, you know, my parents were, just to tell you a little bit more about my family, my parents are of uh, Chinese heritage, but they were actually not, they were actually born in Vietnam themselves. Uh, so, so we are very removed from uh, original um, country. Uh, my sisters were actually also born in Vietnam in the 70s. Um, and those that uh, remember your history, which is very difficult to forget, know that there was a very devastating war that tore a country apart. <clears throat> and my parents and my family were caught up in that. Um, and so at that time, my sisters were about three and six years old uh, when my, my parents had to flee um, a war-torn country. and to come to, uh, well, actually, they went to um, uh, an, a refugee camp in Malaysia first before they were figured out what to do with. And so they saw some things that are unspeakable, to be honest, and things that um, they, they, my father still today will not talk about. Um, in fact, I have an aunt and my grandmother who I had never met because they had died on one of the boats. People don't know if it was because of, of uh, Pirates, or because of a storm, or that sank, or too many people. No, no one really actually, no one actually, uh, really knew. You know, I admired my father for how hard he worked to put uh, food on our table at home. Um, how hard he worked, um, but I never really appreciated the gravity of what they went through uh, at, as a child until I became an adult and had kids of my own, and to imagine uh, what that would have been like. Because when my father did that, he was he was 30 at that time. Um, my mother also worked hard to take care of us at home. Um, I know that as a fact, you know, later as an adult, when I thought back about some of those times, I know she experienced uh, PTSD. I know that was not something that was uh, easy for her to have gone through. Uh, looking back, I really understand how difficult it was, uh, especially with having children of my own. Um, to further the story, something happened that set the course of our family's life. Uh, my mother was diagnosed with cancer when I was around 10. She fought a tough battle. Uh, but by the time I was in seventh grade, the end of my seventh grade, she passed away. Um, so my father, uh, because of his language barrier, he worked, uh, he worked nights. So he worked at night. Um, and so my sister, since they're so much older than me, they were actually off uh, at college. And so uh, what happened to me, I was left by myself uh, to take care of myself. And you can imagine for a junior high kid, that's probably not the best thing. <laughs> um, and when I look back about it, that was the same age as my own son now, Noah, that, the time that I went through all this. Um, <clears throat> but something that my family decided was uh, it probably wasn't good to uh, leave me uh, by myself uh, for, for much longer. So throughout the uh, time of that, when my mother passed away um, until, oh boy, I guess my eighth grade year, I was uh, on my own. And it was devastating to our family to have, basically I felt like my family was gone. You know, all of a sudden my sisters are gone to college, my dad's not really home very much, and my mother had passed away. So that was a tough period for me. Um, but then something else happened, actually. Um, I have an aunt. Um, uh, they live in Oklahoma. My aunt and uncle. Uh, my aunt actually 
contacted my father and said uh, that she would like to take me in. Um, and that was a discussion she had had with my dad and my sisters, that they didn't want me uh, going to the high school there by myself and, and not having um, uh, somebody to uh, care for me as a, as a, still as a young kid. Think back about it. Uh, so so my, my aunt, uh, who had two young kids of her own at that time, uh, she was, I was just talking to Lindsay about this, she was, uh, her and my uncle are 39 years old. I'm older than them <laughs> now when they took in, uh, they took me in. And in fact, they didn't just take me in, they took in, um, I have another cousin and her brother uh, for, for other circumstances, for other reasons. Um, maybe that's a story for another day. But they took the three of us in. I was uh, 15 at the time, my other cousin was 16, and my other cousin, uh, Excuse me, he was, uh, he was 19. And so they, with two little kids of their own, they took in um, the three of us. Um, my uncle, he always said he wanted a big family, so he definitely got that. <laughs> um, so something about my aunt and uncle were, uh, you know, they were actually uh, Christians. You know, um, my, my, my aunt and uncle, actually, they, were, uh, they both went to Oklahoma Christian University. And so I went from a uh, kid roaming the streets in Burbank, California, to Oklahoma. <laughs> that, was a, that was a big shift uh, during that time. Um, and when I arrived, I was, I was a bit rough around the edges, but I would say that the, the church was very uh, good at bringing me in. In fact, my aunt, she was the third grade Bible class teacher um, and she made me sit there as a 15-year-old with all the third graders in her class. She said I needed to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> so I made friends with all the third graders, which is funny because now my daughter Claire is three, thir uh, in third grade. <laughs> um, but my aunt and uncle, they were the kind of people that had people in their homes all the time. Um, they were very active in church. Um, um, and, and they... Uh, they did a lot for me at that time. Um, basically, my life was transformed from that, uh, from that time. Uh, my aunt and uncle, every, I remember uh, every evening we would have time of prayer, a time of uh, Bible study, and a time of, uh, I even had to uh, do some memory verses with my, um, my little uh, cousins at that time. They were about, when we first started living there, they were five and three. Um, but after, I would say after, that time of, of being in that type of environment, uh, having a family, uh, having now um, understanding the Word of God, uh, that's when I became a Christian. I, uh, I actually was baptized, if, I don't know if anybody knows that the, this isn't in this part of the world, but um, in a camp in Nebraska, York College, at a camp called SoulQuest, I don't know if anybody knows that, if I'd mentioned that, but um, but through that period that I went from a time of, of um, uh, having no family um, to where I was in much need of, of experiencing uh, love, family, that I, God had, had taken me out of that and given that to me. Um, I made some of the best friends that I have uh, in, in the church, actually, in that uh, youth group. Uh, I don't. I don't. I guess some of the kids are in Bible Bowl now, but I'd have to say that that changed my life too. The, the kids, uh, the friends that I was, you know, the lifelong friends I made from from high school, which actually, uh, this is another story. I won't go into too much today, but we actually, Lindsay and I actually lived in Japan for a while, uh, for about seven years, um, uh, it, and we worked on some vocational ministry there, and I was able to be there with two of my friends from high school. Um, that we never anticipated that we'd, we'd join back together again because uh, one of them went to a different college um, during that time. So that was a blessing for sure. Um, but I, I guess I wanted to say that becoming a Christian really did save my life, literally. Um, and when I think back, I actually reconnected with some of the friends I ran around with be, uh, before I had moved. Um, to go live with my aunt and uncle, and they were not in a good state. And so those, uh, in fact, they had got, been caught up in some things that um, I never know if I would have been caught up in the same, and my life would have been very different. Um, 
So I'd shared this story actually with Claire, what I shared with you today. You know, she said to me, she said, Dad, that's a sad story. <laughs> she, when, I, when I told her about, you know, things I had gone through. Um, but I answered yes, you know, I was sad at that time and that was a, that was a difficult time, but boy, am I thankful uh, for what God did for me. Um, you know, and if I had not gone through uh, some of those difficult events, if I had not gone through what had happened, I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, th you know, I think back about, um, when you think back about life's events, I wouldn't be here today. I, wouldn't, uh, I would never have uh, met Lindsay. I would never have had my children. Uh, I wouldn't be here standing in front of you. I'd be somewhere else. Um, but I, you know, God took me through some difficult times um, to bring me where I am today. And when I think, about, and I think back about what my mother went through, um, that was a very difficult time for us, thinking back about um, you know, the pain, uh, the suffering that she went through, um, and, and ultimately to succumb to, uh, to a death. And when I think back about that, um, you know, it reminds me very much of a story of somebody that died for us um, so that we could be here uh, where we are today, so that we can all, uh, somebody that died for us, so we could be here um, to be saved, right, to have that eternal life. I think about um, my aunt and uncle, uh, their selflessness uh, to take in uh, a teenager. Uh, that boy, did that really propel them f as parents with uh, a three-year-old and a five-year-old to bring in three teenagers? Boy, that took faith from them, and that took a, the uh, um, love uh, and kindness. Um, and boy, what about that congregation in Oklahoma City, uh, Britain Road Church of Christ? That was the church that I, uh, that I first started to know about, um, about the Lord. I never opened a Bible until then. So it's, it's, it's very humbling to think about where, uh, where I had to go through uh, to, um, uh, to become where I am today with the fact that I have been saved. And I think all of us each have that uh, coming from somewhere to where we are saved, to know we are at that point and saved and to, and to be restored to have that relationship with God. I also tell that story in a, in a, in a sense of to appeal to all of us that look at those, uh, those acts that you, uh, selfless acts, those times that, um, that you uh, do something because you, have, you are prompted by the Holy Spirit. Um, think about how that affects somebody else's life. And I, I cannot name everybody that um, influenced me uh, from, uh, from, from church uh, growing up. All the people that were there um, that were patient with me uh, and that mentored me and taught me uh, as somebody that didn't know uh, about God. And all those, uh, so I appeal to you to think about that in, in, in the case of, um, of looking around in your own communities and those around you um, in what, um, what you can uh, do. And I also appeal to you to think of that story of yours where God has uh, taken you from somewhere uh, where God has done something in your life uh, that you can share, uh, because I think that is something that um, can can impact um, uh, can impact somebody's life without you knowing it. So, what is your story? So, this is my so this is my family. That's my um, my cousin uh, Jenny. Let's see on the left, uh, my cousin Kevin, and who is this guy? <laughs> I don't wear ties anymore, so I guess that was a th And then that's my Uncle Carl and my Aunt May. Um, and then that's Caleb and Meredith. And Caleb now, he's uh, 6'3 and does CrossFit, and his arms are as big as my legs. So it's funny to, when I look at this picture, because I used to change his diaper. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> OK, so I appreciate that you uh, were listening to that story. Let me do a, do a quick time check. Okay, so I'm gonna be quick here. Um, so I just wanted to say we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God has given us that authority to be his representative, to, to share our stories with others, to share what Christ has done for us. So real quick, reaching out ministry, so what do we do? Um, so right now, 
I think there, it's a very big scope, so I think we, we, we kind of narrow it down to, to what we can, to bite off what we can chew in some sense. Uh, but I think something that we are, are, are here to, to help with is uh, to create a culture of sharing the gospel and just to talk about it um, and, and um, to keep that on our minds so that, and to pray about it. Um, we think about working the local harvest to, um, uh, to identify prepared hearts where God brings people here or puts people in your life. Uh, share the gospel with those in um, our community. Um, also, we have training and resources. Um, so this, we have these uh, books that were actually prepared by members here. Uh, uh, Raymond Walker led the effort, uh, and I, I know that Mark Friedman was involved, and, and Jen Tolbert had done a lot of the preparation also of the files, and I know Karen also as well, and others that were part of that um, reaching out group. Um, so we have these materials that we had went through, so I'll skip through this for, for time's sake. Um, and then right now we're, we're in this in Christ study. So what I, I wanted to bring to your attention that we have these materials, they're really excellent materials um, and, and they have a purpose behind it. It's a very purposeful um, study, something that you can guide with, something that has good questions to ask um, and very, all the key Bible verses that are important in walking somebody through that, uh, very good. It was very well prepared, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of, of that. Um, I also wanted to um, mention a little bit about um, uh, godly teamwork. Um, so just as a body through one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, even so the body is made up of one but many parts, is, is to know that we all work together. Um, and this is a question I would pose ourselves as well, is how can we work together effectively as a, a biblical, godly team as a church? Um, and then this one, I won't read all of it, but it talks about how two are better than one. Um, uh, and you can read about this in Ecclesiastes. It's a very good analogy. Um, uh, we also see that in this sense, um, we have biblical and godly teamwork here is where Jesus actually sent out uh, two by two um, uh, when he was sending the disciples out. And I mention all this to, to say that you don't have to feel like you have to go at it alone. Um, and that's the purpose of our ministry as well, um, to provide not only resources, but encouragement and where we all can share together and talk through uh, various situations that we get fa or we are faced with, but that we can um, do this together. Um, so opportunities to serve. So I just wanted to cl um, finish up with this is just that, you know, there are lots of things that we can do. Um, and again, we don't necessarily need to bite off more than we can chew, but there are uh, ways that on a practical level uh, that we can share, following up with guests or introducing people. Uh, sometimes it's a simple introduction or um, to greet people or to see if you identify people that are uh, new or to lead a, a, one of these studies um, or to maybe uh, it's a lot of pressure to bring, uh, maybe it's a lot of pressure for you to ask your friend or do a study about um, uh, but maybe you can bring that friend and somebody else can do the study. You know, there's all kinds of ways that we can be creative and, and, and work together uh, with our various talents uh, in this work. Uh, so the question is, will, will you join in Christ's ministry? Um, don't go at it alone. Uh, and let's work together on that. And I wanted to finish with this um, part. He, sa he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Now that is the good news right there. Now that is the gospel uh, right there. Um, we've been, we have that hope of eternal life. Um, and that's something that we can share with those around us. I just want to say thank you and have a great week. <laughs>